If there is one thing Batman fans love, it's reading about and watching Batman suffer. Welcome back Nerd Squad, why do we love to watch characters suffer? Well, it's because it's inspiring. No, really. Watching or reading about someone overcome adversity and struggle, be set back, face traumas and fears reminds us of what we are capable of, inspires us to continue the good fight. Sure, our problems might not be as dramatic or as grandiose as Batman's, but even in fiction, in good fiction, you can always find truth, and therefore, something to relate to. Today we'll be counting down the top 10 worst things that happened to Batman to explore just that. And this is a part two, so if you want even more adversity, check out the part one to this list. Before we get into it, I need to tell you about some exciting news. We have a new gaming channel coming your way that will be launching on January 22nd. Check it out over here. Oh my gosh, I almost died. I almost died. I thought you were a cactus, my friend. I thought you were a cactus. We've got iron, baby! Yes! Okay, my main goal is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> Bro, ah, nah, no, I'm gonna fight you with a pork chop. No, come here, come here! This is awesome! Viper Girl will be streaming everything from Minecraft to Cyberpunk 2077 and more. Head on over and subscribe now so you can be there with us at launch. Do it! And now, let's get counting down this list. Number 10, wanted by everyone, and not in a good way. In Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, Batman is a wanted man as in for illegal activities, or things that people are deeming illegal then. I mean, technically if you're a vigilante, it's all pretty illegal. He's wanted not just by the police as well, but also by by the government. With Superman also now in the president's pocket, this also means that Bruce is up against one of his best friends, Kal-El, also one of the most powerful superheroes in DC Comics. So there's that. It seems in Dark Knight Returns, everyone is against old man Batman, even at times himself. Of course, that is what makes the story so good. One of our favorite things to read about when it comes to Batman comics usually is how Batman must struggle against the odds and overcome not only the adversity of everyone against him, but at times, himself. Or his old age as well in this case. It's hard getting older. Every day. <sighs> Slowly moving towards death. It's fine. Number 9. Made a massive mistake. I mean this had to have hurt Bruce's ego I imagine at the very least. Following Batman having his back broken by Bane, snapped over Bane's knee like some twig, Batman was forced into a temporary retirement while he recovered. Who should he choose for his replacement while he was gone? But none other than Jean Paul Valley. While this was was thought to be an odd choice at the time, considering, you know, he'd been training Robins to, you'd think, eventually take over for him when needed. He had his reasons, which he would later on even explain at length. However, it turned out that picking Azrael to step into his shoes wasn't necessarily the best choice, considering that being Batman basically turned Azrael crazy and sent him down a pretty dark path for a good amount of time afterward. When Bruce returned, he along with Nightwing and Robin, who was Tim Drake at the time, were forced to confront Azrael and make him surrender the cape and cowl. And before we move on to this next spot, just a quick reminder, if you love Batman as much as I love Batman, I said that weird, then you should give this video a thumbs up. Also if you like when I sometimes forget what I'm saying and talk weird. I think we deserve multiple thumbs up for that to be honest. Number 8. Contingencies used against him. During the Tower of Babel story arc, Batman had his many contingency plans used against him when Ra's al Ghul managed to get his hands on them. The ones Raish was particularly focused on here were those that would allow him to disable the Justice League. Batman had a backup plan ready should any member of the League go rogue, keeping a file on each of them and devising a failsafe involving their weaknesses being used against them. Ra's enacts all of Batman's contingencies, nearly killing the Justice League and manages to distract Batman long enough by using his parents' corpses as bait. Although the Justice League did manage to win the day against Raish, this also created a lot of tension between Batman and the rest of the team and resulted in him being voted off. So that like it was like Survivor, he's getting voted off the island, the Justice League island. I would watch actually Justice League of America if it was like a reality Survivor show. That would be cool. Someone write that down. Number 7. Dick Grayson quits. A lot of the depictions of Dick Grayson moving from the role of Robin to Nightwing are awesome and even show a sense of maturity and progression when it comes to the relationship that Dick and Bruce have. However, Dick leaving the Robin mantle hasn't always been the most peaceful of resignations. To tell you. But it was your place to put her in danger. It wasn't like that. I volunteered. You think you did? You don't know him like I do. 
he manipulates. In fact, in the Batman animated series, Dick outright quits being Robin and resigns with a punch straight to Batman's face. Things change. I changed. The game's over, Batman. I quit. Robin, wait. <laughs> It was like the weakest punch ever. Gotta really throw your body into it. Calling Batman out for being underhanded and manipulative when it comes to how he treats his protégés. Number 6. Fortune Stolen During one of the recent Batman events, Joker War, Batman had his entire fortune taken away from him. This obviously is a pretty intense blow to Bats and leaves him in not a great place. For Batman, a lot of what makes him Batman is his fortune. Or at least, that's kind of what we've been led to believe. In the end, Batman comes out of this stronger, realizing despite being widely thought of as an iconic lone wolf, that it's really his Bat family and his allies that make him strong. That and, you know, all the skills he's worked to hone throughout the years. However, even after the events of Joker War, Batman still does not reclaim his fortune, choosing to leave it instead with Lucius Fox, who he says has earned it for his years of loyalty and service, and who also deserves it just for, well, everything he suffered in Joker War, let's be real. Lucius tells Bruce that he no longer wants to help him as Batman and says that if he wants to continue, basically he'll be going alone without even any financial support from Fox. This obviously changes a lot of what Batman should be capable of in the future and should also create even more challenges and adversity for him moving forward. Number 5. Omega Beams to the face! Well, to the whole thing really. Not just to the face. Although this didn't end up actually killing Batman at the time, we thought it had and it was pretty intense. Let's also acknowledge as well what came before the moment Darkseid let loose on those Omega Beams. Batman ended up being taken and tortured by Darkseid, refusing to break before they had their face off. When they did, it was because Batman had the one weapon that was known to be capable of defeating Darkseid, a gun loaded with a lethal radion bullet. He coolly explains to Darkseid why he's prepared to break his moral code and kill him before firing, knowing that Darkseid would definitely obliterate him with Omega Beams, which he did, but not before Batman would be able to fire off that deadly shot, which he also did. While we thought the Omega Beams had killed Batman, they actually sent him back to the past, but at the time, readers had thought they just witnessed a pretty gnarly Batman death. We won't talk about the past stuff, because that's pretty weird, so we'll just leave that alone. Sweep that under the comic book rug. Number 4. Torture of Tim Drake I've said it once and I'll say it again. If you want to hurt Batman, the best place to start is by hurting those that he cares for. Especially considering how hard it is to actually hurt the Bat himself. He's literally spent years training his mind, his body, and his spirit to prevent anyone from being able to do so after all. Unfortunately, his protégés don't have as much experience, which tends to make Make them mm, a little more vulnerable. Even the ones who are considered to have a mind to rival even Bruce's, like Tim Drake. Granted, the animated version of Tim Drake, which is the version here who suffered, was more of a combination of both Jason Todd and Tim Drake when it came to the character's personality and appearance. The animated version of Tim Drake ended up tortured nonstop for days on end after being kidnapped by Harley Quinn and the Joker. After they had gotten everything they wanted out of him, they didn't stop there either. The Joker and Harley then decided to brainwash him into becoming a mini Joker, rebranding Tim as their son, Joker Jr. It sounds adorable, but it's not. Number 3. Death of Spoiler I don't think this one was just hard for Batman actually, but a lot of Batman fans out there besides. Especially those who are also hardcore fans of New Robin, aka Spoiler, aka Stephanie Brown. Many fans hated how Stephanie went here, though fortunately since then we have seen Stephanie return and basically seen her history rewritten, so at least there is a little sense of redemption for a character there. Yay! Stephanie Brown as Spoiler was captured by Black Mask during the events of War Games, and was then tortured to the brink of her breaking point. While well, Black Mask's main aim was information, and a little fun I assume, he does tend to enjoy his torture sessions cause he's completely crazy like that. This all happened because Stephanie attempted to initiate one of Batman's contingency plans involving Matches Malone during Batman's absence, not knowing that Malone was actually Batman himself. Oops. Stephanie managed to escape but was unable to bring herself to kill Black Mask despite all he'd done to her. In the end, Stephanie got away but at the cost of her own life after Black Mask gained the upper hand, shot her in the back, and then pushed her down a flight of stairs before letting her go. 
She died as a result of her injuries, which I don't think is a surprise considering all that stuff that happened. I'm traumatized just thinking about it. Number two, loss of his family. For this point, we're moving over to Flashpoint Batman, who honestly I think has it even worse off than Bruce to start. In the Flashpoint continuity, it's Thomas, Bruce's father, who ends up as Batman after the death of his son Bruce during an alleyway robbery gone wrong. That's right, it's Bruce that dies here instead of his parents. Not only that, but after Bruce's death, Thomas's his wife Martha is driven insane by the loss of her son, not able to move past her son's death and recover. Instead, she ends up giving herself a Glasgow smile in response to a comment Thomas made about missing her smile. Aww. And goes on to become his nemesis, the Joker. When Martha learns of an alternate reality where Bruce lives on to become Batman, and where his one true nemesis is the person she herself has now become, she cannot live with herself and she takes her own life. The whole thing is pretty bleak and Thomas has to do his best to deal with all this while trying to fight crime, make his Gotham better, and help Wally West to basically fix the universe. Number 1. Death of Damian Wayne On part 1 of this list, we talked about the death of another Robin, Jason and Todd. And while all of Batman's Robins usually end up being like surrogate sons to Bruce, and I'm sure in his mind are all equal, I don't think he was ever prepared for his biological son to perish like Jason had. But maybe worse? I don't know. Honestly, dying in an even more twisty way, at least in my opinion, than Jason. Damien was killed by the heretic after being caught up in a massive fight with Leviathan goons. The really tragic thing was that right before his death, the story also paid some tribute to Damien's growth, with him and Nightwing kind of sharing a brotherly moment before he is forced to face off with the heretic and dies as a result. Oh yeah, also after he's like, I promised my dad I wouldn't kill anymore. Ah! Batman arrives too late to the scene where Damien already lays dead. The crazy part is the heretic would turn out to be a clone of Damien, and this would all end up being part of a plot engineered by none other than Talia al Ghul, and more prominently, her father, Raish. What are some of the most tragic events that you feel Batman has lived through? What do you think is the worst injustice he has ever suffered? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, saying thanks so much for watching. Till next time, you. Stay nerdy, YouTube.